Honorable Frank Cappuccino. Here now are your principals introducing first, in the blue corner to my right, wearing the white trunks with the red and blue trim, weighing 141 and a half pounds. His professional record, 37 victories, 11 defeats, 27 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the pride of Lowell, Massachusetts, His opponent in the red corner, wearing white trunks, blue trim, also weighing 141 and a half pounds, with a professional record that reads 34 victories, five defeats. He has 28 knockouts. He boxes out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given your instructions in the dressing room. Now, I want you to be careful on each of your corners where you might be a little wet. So just be careful when you move into the corner. Now, both these touch gloves, I leave it with you. Back in the corner. Stay back in the corner. If Mills Lane, who recently suffered a stroke, were here, this would, when he appropriately would say, Let's, Let's get, get it, it on. on. This is for you, Mills. And the atmosphere in the crowd was lively enough during pre-fight introductions that veteran referee Frank Cappuccino came over to timekeeper Mike Murtha and reminded him, when you hammer the bell, you hammer it hard. We've got to be sure of hearing it. Oh, everybody's expected a good fight tonight. Mickey Ward starts oh. off with a left hook upstairs, not the trademark punch. That one goes to the ribs, but perhaps a reminder to Gaddy, I'll throw it up here too. Gaddy's take on how to fight Mickey Ward, who is a body puncher destroyer. Well, he says body punchers don't like it to the body. I'll hit him in the rib cage too. And I think he's going to do that too. Another big left hook. Mickey's not going to get behind on points in this fight in case he gets stopped on an accidental injury. That's for sure. He's coming out off the bat. Normally a slower starter who sort of builds tempo as the fight goes on, but that's a good point. He probably learned a bit of a lesson in Texas about the importance of getting off early. Yes, but he's also going to learn the importance of throwing a straight right hand, too, because that looping right hand is not going to be effective tonight. been all over the scale 130 135 up to 147 now back to 140 I think he may finally be fighting Emmanuel at his most effective weight yes and he shows combination punching skill there and there's a cut on the right on the Mickey Ward. right eye of uh, Mickey Ward it's on the corner I don't know if it's dangerous but from that left hook that Gaddy land landed earlier Gaddy's looking very good his his punch is real loose freely everything is flowing beautiful and he's moving out of the way very gracefully now Arturo looks good in there as he's already opened up the cut above Ward's right eye, same eye over which Ward was cut and has lost to Vince stop, Phillips. Stop, and it looks, stop, it does look stop. like a bad cut. Looks Jim. deep. Well, you know, we mentioned the two cut men, Al Gavin and Joe Souza. You don't normally hear those names in the pre-fight on camera, but it was necessary tonight. That's right, and if he can make it back to the corner, Al Gavin is a good cut man. In fact, both of them are good cut men. Al's as good as there is. If there's anybody who's that good, it's Joe Souza who's across the yes. way. So both guys may end up bleeding if this fight continues after the way that it's going. Well, any fight in which Arturo doesn't bleed is an upset. Arturo. Look at the combinations, though, from Gaddy. Everything is flowing beautiful, very natural. The fighters who are customarily give 
get in trouble have jabs. And we haven't seen any jabs or many jabs coming from Ward. Now that's a great point, Larry. In his losses to Ivan Robinson and Angel Manfredi, he was beaten to the jab. Ward walks in without jabbing. That's perfect for Gaddy. Stop, stop. Arturo looking over at us as if to say, I agree with the call. Good grab for Tara Gaddy. Excellent. No confidence on the outside. Now what, huh? Bucket. Right here to the right. Right here. Now this is Gavin to the right of your screen, and you can see that Al has already gone to work. Okay. Let's take a look at how this cut was opened in the first round, I believe, as Larry said, on an Arturo Gatti left hook. Well, the cut's already there. But bad of problems as the cut may be, I think the biggest problem that Ward is having is dealing with the rhythm right now of Gatti. Gatti's got his rhythm to move it. He's doing everything very natural. Everything is flowing smoothly. And I think it's going to continue that way unless Mickey steps it up. I think he's going to have to crowd Arturo against the ropes. He won't beat Gaddy in the middle of the ring. Gaddy simply has better feet. That's a good fact. And, he, and also upper body movement. Gaddy's moving his upper body, not just moving. He's moving, bobbing, weaving. Mixing up his punches very well. Uppercut, left hook. Gaddy firing from all angles. It looks so far as though the marriage of Gaddy and Buddy McGirt is paying huge dividends for Arturo's basic craft. Absolutely, he looks very good. He's doing a more variety of things, but the most part, Mickey's very predictable right now. And, and, and the speed and the different movements is really confusing Mickey, and you can see it if you study his mind. But we've seen Mickey Ward lose every minute of every round and win the fight, as he did against Alfonso Sanchez. You can never count him out. Let him go, let him go. the power that Gaddy's got because he, he Gaddy's a good punch he turns all of his body to in his punches and he's what we call a free punch he lets all of his body turn all of it through stop, very stop, loose stop. and natural and it's the variety of things that he's doing that's really causing a lot of problems you understand? You understand? whereas Mickey is, okay. is very uh, predictable plus I think the punching power of Gaddy in addition to his boxing is very effective yeah between rounds when we focused on Ward's corner to watch Al Gavin work the gut I'm told that Arturo Gaddy's people, trainer Buddy McGirt in particular, were telling him, you've got too much power for Mickey. He's not used to facing power like yours. At this stage, he's got a little bit of too much of everything. Started to say, I think it's the speed more than the power. The speed, and, and he's shooting uppercuts, left hooks, right hands over the shoulder, a variety of things. My Body God, punches. numbers, Arturo threw 70 punches in round one. He's going to wind up throwing more than 70 at this rate in round two. And he's connecting at a high percentage, and Ward is just occasionally getting in a pot shot here and there. The impressive thing about what Gotti is doing is that when he throws those combinations, he's not staying there long enough to get hit in return. Now, Ward is doing exactly what he should do. Now, he's closing the distance now to try to neutralize some of the movements. He's closing the distance before he punches. You keep the punches up. And now keep Cappuccino warning Gaddy to keep punches up. So let's make a note that there was a verbal warning at the end of round two. Gentlemen. And now listen. When he gets close to you, keep your hands up. Now he's trying to get that body shot. So when he gets close to you, just keep him turning. Okay? You're boxing beautiful. Just keep using the speed. Okay? Straight right hand. 
punch on him all day long. You just stand there. Head movement, double jab. Head movement, double jab. The overhead right, but you gotta keep your right hand up. All he's looking for is a hook or an uppercut on you. That's it. Deep breath. Come on, you're used to 30 seconds. You're not. Put the head back. Aim and swallow. Just keep moving your head. As long as it goes, the better it's going. Come on, man. You heard him there. Box numbers through the second round, Arturo Gatti averaging 29 jabs thrown per round. That makes it very difficult for Ward, who doesn't really have a jab, to start his attack. But Ward seems to be applying more pressure now, trying to get close, and he's going to have to continue doing that. He can't sit back at a distance. He's going to have to get very close to Gatti if he's got any chance of pulling this fight off. And he's going to have to trust that Al Gatti can keep the cut under control and keep him in the fight even as he presses both. Yes, he does. Gavin Singh have did a good job. Usually a good cut man takes two rounds before the blood really coagulates. Hard left hook by Artura Gatti. Gatti landing a lot of punches cleanly and sharply. Ward trying to feint his way inside. Looks as though Gaddy is so conscious of Ward's left hook that there might be an opening here for Ward to land the right hand, but he's not really quick with the right the way he is right. with the left. See, Ward is primarily dealing with one punch for the most part. It's most of the punch going to strip his left hand, and most good fighters can, can neutralize that. He's going to have to stay much, just as he's doing now, he's going to have to continue to do that, to stay close. Gaddy. Turning away from Ward at the ropes and back to the center of the ring. Well, he's not going to be able to deal with Gaddy's speed anyway, so he's just going to stay close to him. That's the only chance he's got. Stop, stop, stop. Earlier in the round, Ward left, landed his first good hook to the body. He has, right. to, he has to do more of that if he's going to be there in the second There's half another of the one. fight. He just landed his second and, good and left into the body. you got to remember also that Gaddy himself cuts up and swells up pretty bad himself. Well, and, and if anything will take Gaddy's foot movement away, it would be that left hook to the body. If Gaddy. Ward could get it in there. Yep, and he's getting closer and closer now. What Gaddy's people have been most concerned about is just this kind of stuff that will keep Ward in the fight long enough to if he, bust up yeah. Gaddy. Yep, and here, yeah, comes right the, here comes the Lowell, Massachusetts contingent. Rising to the occasion for their fighter. Yeah. And here's yeah. Gaddy with some of that. I'll give it to yes. him the body medicine. Now the fighters turned out to be what we expected. So much for the boxing. They're standing up in round three. Maybe that by those body punches has slowed Gaddy down a little bit. And now he's trying to slow Ward down with body punches too. Good sharp left hook upstairs by Gaddy. Uppercuts for Arturo. Fast hands. Ward's cut opening again. Ward has got to keep it in tight like that. It's... That's what they came here for. You got his respect. Listen to me. When you get inside, don't take that body shot, Arturo. Don't listen to me. You finish beautiful. Don't, you don't have to take that shot. Don't take it. As soon as you get inside, go to your left. That's all he's trying to look at me. Look at me. I'm over here. I'm over here. Stay focused, Arturo. Listen to me. Listen to me. You're boxing beautiful. Don't take that shot. Okay? More boxing comes your way next month. June 1 on HBO. First, you'll see a preview show counting down to the Lennox Lewis Mike Tyson fight. Then a live heavyweight fight between Evander Holyfield and Hasim Rahman. June 8 on pay per view. The Lennox Lewis Mike Tyson fight for which so many have waited for so long. It says here on the card, it should be a memorable night. I read that with a straight face. June 22 on HBO pay-per-view, the rematch of 2000's fight of the year, Eric Morales against Marco Antonio Barrera, live from Las Vegas. Great fight. <laughs> round four begins. In round three, the two fighters, by CompuBox estimate, landed a combined 53 power shots. 30 for Gaddy, 23 for Ward. 
Harold, how do you have it so far? Okay, Jim, three to nothing, 30 to 27, Arturo Gatti. Jim, I gotta tell you, Arturo Gatti showing us not only beautiful combinations, but really, really nice ring generalship. It's a big ring, probably something like 22 feet. He's moving beautifully, keeping Mickey Ward off balance. When he did stand still in the last minute of round three, he ripped those shots to the body. Always combinations. I think Arturo Gatti's won all three rounds, although the third one was close. Given that Ward is the New England fighter, Manny, you have to be surprised at the size of the ring. Yes, I thought it would be a smaller ring to favor him, but it, right now the ring is a big ring, which really would favor Gaddy since he's coming to this fight, predicted that he would be the boxer. Gaddy's left eye beginning to swell. No blood yet. Gaddy's left eye swells in virtually every fight. That's because of those high cheekbones that he has. going to come out of both of those guys. I don't think the boxing is going to be too much from this point on. I think Gaddy's going to have to fight Mickey because Mickey's putting too much pressure on him now, and he's going to resort back to what he's been doing most of his career, and that's to punch. Gaddy to the body. Gaddy with uppercut. Right hand. Oh, this is good stuff. Looks like there's blood coming now from Ward's mouth. But we saw Ward in those type of fights. Remember the fight with Emmanuel Burton. So this is just one of his normal fights. Fight of the year for 2001. Ward Burton broke a lot of confidence. Oh, times. oh, that's another right hand bomb by Mickey Ward. Gaddy takes this one a little better, but he's been rocked in this round. Oh, big left hook by Ward. Big left hook by Gaddy. In that fight against Emmanuel Burton, the 35 year old Ward averaged 118 punches around. And, and he, what's surprising me now, he's coming back with a beautiful short right hand. That's what his most effective punch about has been the right hand now, more so than the body punch. Cappuccino didn't hesitate at all. He was sure of what he'd seen. Now, he's got five minutes. To the end of the round. They've sounded a bell to end the round. Keep doing it. You know what's happening. Okay. Senior, go ahead. Harold, why did the round end? Okay, Jim. Let me tell you something. It's miscommunication between the referee and the timekeeper. When Frank Cappuccino saw that low blow, there's no question he should have yelled time out. At which point, Mickey Ward would have up to five minutes to recover. If he can't, you know, continue at the five minutes, he loses. But the timekeeper never stopped the clock. And that's all there was to it. He kept let, he let it run. He let the round run out. Does he have five minutes the now? Ward still have five, no, yeah. No, 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 absolutely not. One minute rest period. Let's take a look and see if the blow was low. Yes, it was. Yep. That's how we saw it. I'm all set. I want to go. Mick, you heard Mickey Ward. He's all set. He wants to go. Why is that not a surprise? In round four, both guys threw more than 30 power shots and landed more than half. So it is becoming the slugfest everyone anticipated, despite Arturo Gatti's skillful efforts to make it a boxing match in the early rounds. Turn fire until Gaddy is finished, which invites Gaddy to keep going. Emmanuel, how discouraging is it to Arturo to have landed the kind of bombs he's landed? It's got to be because he's treading full force on those shots. And actually, hasn't really hurt Ward. He hits exactly. him with the punches, full force. 
and Ward may wiggle a lot from the impact of it and move his, lose his balance, but he's never shown that he's been seriously hurt yet. And the only one to me that's been hurt has been Gaddis. He got hit with a short right hand. Absolutely. Another short right hand by Ward again. We're about halfway through the round right now. We've lost our round clock. About a minute and a half to go in the round now. Blood begins to flow from above Ward's right eye again. But look at the distance oh. between the two fighters. This is oh. becoming Mickey Ward's fight. They're fighting in a phone booth, and that's the way he wants it. You know, this is reminiscent of a fight many years back since we're speaking of the 50s. I'm feeling a guy named Colin Basilio and Tony DeMarco. Basilio, one of the fighters I mentioned at the beginning of the night. Yes. You know, you could take those white trunks off and put one pair of white and one pair of black on, and we could go all the way back to the 50s. It is man against man in there. Oh, my God. This bout is scheduled for 10. Well, I'll tell you what, the fans are going to get 12 rounds of action out of 10 rounds tonight. No, they're going to get 15 uh, more. rounds. Oh, look at that. Look at that combination. And Arturo. Oh, yeah, he's right eye is bleeding. Yeah. The blood begins. Oh, and he's loaded up in the punch. A tremendous rally by Mickey Ward. And the timekeeper can't seem to get it straight when to ring the bell. Cappuccino was saying now. Yep. Just aim your punches. You got this one. I got the towel, man. Don't worry. Keep that. How you feel? Give me your head. Let me huh? work for you. Well, sir. Touch him, touch him, and turn out. You stay in the side, taking a message to everybody, punishment. Don't take it. Rinse this, Mikey. Come on, baby. We got to suck it up like a champ now. We Gaddis talked earlier of the, shots. of the tremendous... Everything that he's shooting is landing pretty good, turning all of his body weight through on every punch. And at this stage, if you don't look closer, you think that Ward is about to give. And here Ward's coming back. And I didn't think that Gaddy was expecting to throw that many punches, especially the short punches that he's shooting. All right, we're halfway through. We talked about the amazing condition and endurance and will of Ward. And we saw it in that round, how he came back at Gaddy as, as Emmanuel, as you mentioned, Gaddy hasn't had to throw that many punches for a long time. No, and, and, and he's landed some beautiful shots. But, you know, as I said earlier, now Gaddy is starting to swell up and, and bleed also. But at this stage, I would still have Gaddy with him, but it looks very promising for Mickey. Because Mickey has not been hurt yet. He's been hit with some great shots, but he's never staggered away from it all. Gentlemen, in the fifth round, they landed 98 punches. My CompuBox estimate, 88 of them power shots. Almost evenly distributed. Oh, keep that control there. A hellacious round. So the pace slows slightly here in round six. Get his fight this Texas is going to come out now, and it's going to be nothing but a slugfish, I think, for the most part. Man. And I think Ward is going to put enough pressure on him where he can't really box him. He's going to have to fight. If Mickey Ward wants to come to you, he will walk through a hailstorm of punishment to do it. And you better watch that short right hand that he's trying to get close to shoot over the shoulder now. That seemed to be his key punch. He's Dang, turning he's it over. Again. Yes. He's turning it over like never before. And that's just as dangerous as the left hook to the body is at this point in the fight. Oh, what a haymaker by Gaddy. And Ward just comes right back. Business as usual. Big left hook by Gaddy. Ward says, I'll walk with you over here. Relentless. That's the right hand again. And he should be straight across the shoulder as if he's anticipating 
the movement of Getty, instead of shooting at Getty's head a lot, Ward is shooting it straight at his shoulders and he's catching him because most of the time, Getty tries to avoid the right by going down instead of pulling away. But Gaddy is fighting a good round here. He's winning this round big. He's, he's gone back to some movement, throwing combinations, trying to move away, standing and fighting, moving again, trying to move his upper body. This is a very good uh, Gaddy we're looking at here. Yep, in the war of wills, Gaddy has taken it to another step. And now Ward is going to have to reimpose himself yeah, as he did in rounds four Gattis, and five. Gaddis went back to boxing. I didn't think he would, but he's went back to boxing. He's working a very effective too. Yep. And Joe Souza did such great work that I see no blood on Gaddy's right eye. Ward pounds his heart as if to say, I can take you anything you can give. And he can. That's it, baby. That's the key. Listen to me. He's in the same fight you're in, okay? He's feeling the same tired as you, if not tired. Nice and smart. Okay, now when he gets close to you, listen to me. If you don't feel like punching, move your upper body. He's not going to do anything. Okay, then go back to the jab. You're seeing you on the ropes. You touch, touch, touch. Keep doing that till you get that second win. Take a deep breath. Now we boxing like our Gaddy. Okay. Listen to me. Look at me, baby. You got this fight. You can rest all day tomorrow, you understand? Yeah. This is for all the marbles, baby. You understand me? Box. Became a business. You know what I would do? Nick, you got to back him up. He's hitting it here. He's hitting it here, man. Do it back, please. Come on, come on, let's go. People in boxing have been looking forward to this fight for a couple of years. Now They're getting go. what they were looking forward to. And six rounds in the books, four more to go. Harold, how do you have it? Okay, Jim, four rounds to two, 57-56, Arturo Gatti. Jim, uh, Mickey Wood gets an extra point in the fourth round because Frank Cappuccino took away a point for a low blow. It may be crucial at the end of this fight. Round five, I thought Mickey Wood pulled out because sometimes what you do in the last 30 seconds is just an accumulation of what you've done in the first two and a half minutes. And it was a great rally by Wood at the end of round five. Round Six Arturo Gatti comes back strong. Four to two Gatti, but Gatti by only one point. I have Gatti ahead four, one, and one even because of that point taken away. And for the moment, Gatti has succeeded in tempting Ward back into a boxing match. Yes, he has. Uh, Gatti's no, doing no, a beautiful no, job. No. He's going back to his boxing, step his step corners, step instructor. Step He's step mixing step up his attack once back. again. Mickey seems to be confused. And you heard the impassioned speech between rounds by Buddy McGirt, who's been there against some terrific fighters and is turning out to be a very good trainer. Ward pops that Gaddy again with that right hand. I wonder what 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 kind of brains ahead that both of these guys have. I mean, they get him with punches right on the chin, and it seems like it just stimulates him. Well, it's another right hand again, and it comes right back. Big uh, counter left hook by Gaddy there, as Ward was a little long with the straight right hand. Left it out there, Arturo popped it. All right, good, good, good. That's what I want to see. I, I think I think Gaddy's doing beautiful with his new style of boxing. He's mixing up his work, boxing beautiful, but still he's the big puncher. He still sets down every once in a while and makes you respect him. He can still fight. Yeah, and I love his punching power. Through six rounds, Gaddy landed more than 200 punches, most of them on the face of Mickey Ward. And here comes Ward. Let him go, let him go, let him out. You can't stop him. Before a big fight, most fighters like to try something new in training. Ward's innovation this time around was to rest only 30 seconds between rounds of sparring. Yeah, but I don't think nothing can prepare him for this type of a fight here. Not only with a guy who's a busy fighter, but also a great puncher. At this stage, Mickey's been outgunned in terms of talent, skill, but not in terms of heart. He's always trying, but right, let him go. just let him one go. step behind. Come on, come on. Turned southpaw here at the end of the round. Very good. Very 
to no great effect. Hey, listen. We got 10 minutes, baby. Can we get 10 minutes? Yes. Okay, listen to me, baby. When he gets close to you, Arturo, if you're not going to punch, have your hands up. Just move. He's gonna, he, he don't want to fight no more. Okay, he's looking for the one shot. And go back to the... You got luck. I'm all right. All right. Yeah. Put it on him now. Okay. You got to use Jake everything Brown. with your left head, Mick. Everything with your left. Yeah. Bang the shit out of him. Oh Mick, don't be a punching bag. If you're going to be a punching bag, I'm not going to let this go like this. Fight hot. Okay. Be back. Dick Eklund, Ward's brother and trainer, said he's not going to let him be a punching bag. Don't take okay. so many okay. punches. Can he start to avoid him? Is he, no. is, is he Mickey Ward if he does avoid them? I don't think he can avoid it. I think all he can do is just try to fight his way through the trouble because he's not going to ever avoid all let of those go, punches. Gat is extremely sharp tonight. Gatti threw 31 jabs in the seventh round. If he keeps throwing 30 jabs around, it's going to be awfully difficult for Ward to reel him in. It's going to set up the chance for Arturo to outbox Ward down the stretch as he's done through most of the first seven. You know, it's hard for me looking at the wars that I've saw Gatti in, and he's fought all of the, I mean, great wars and all of the top fighters. To see him moving like this, like a young fighter, just totally amazing to me. And those wars you saw in the ring, he had some equally vicious wars with the champagne bottle and the nightlife oh, on yes. the circuit in New Jersey. You know, but he's gone, through <laughs> he's gone through changes before. As an amateur, he was a boxer. Early in his pro career, he was a brawler. Then he changed to a boxer to win the 130-pound title from Tracy Patterson. Then he became a brawler again, and here he is back to boxing. Just the fact that he's here is amazing. Well, you give his, his management team great credit for taking him off for a couple of years to help restore him and give him easy fights and not use him up because most of us didn't expect to see him still in the ring at the age of 30. He's got a manager named Pat Lynch who's been as loyal and steadfast as any manager in boxing can be with Arturo Gatti. He's kept his career alive. Yes, but even with all of that, there's something unusually physically in this man for this man to take all of this. He's just one of those gifted guys like Yvonne Durrell. So you just run across guys like that sometimes. Another, another Canadian. Another, that's right. That's right. I forgot about that. Absolutely. I thought that's why you were using Durrell <laughs> as the standard there. And I you thought know, it was a given. And you know, all of the punches oh, Durrell oh, took, when you meet him, he speaks like a, a British scholar. So go, very, very smart, intelligent man. You don't fight with your head, Arthur. There's that right hand again. into it. Gaddy yeah, throwing a few change-ups and then the high hard one. Again, left-right combination landed flush. Ward bleeding heavily. And Gaddy was hurt by a left and a right. Is hurt. Yes. And this What a fight. We got away from him. It looks like Mickey Ward is going to try to pull off another Emmanuel Burden. Mick, come here. in case you got him going. Yeah. Baby. You're taking too many shots inside, I told you. Throw the right hand to the body, I told you. Okay? Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, I told you. Listen to me. We got six minutes. I told you, you got six minutes. Give me the six minutes for Jerry. That's it. It started with that short right hand again. You know, this fight is just turning back and forth so much. And I think the body shot in there had a lot of effect on him. And I don't know if Atari is going to fully recuperate from that volley. We know 
that Mickey Ward can keep fighting through this kind of action. Ward landed yes. 42 out of 71 punches. We're in the not round. sure about Gaddy because right. he That's hasn't right. been in this kind of a war with as a strong a fighter as Ward before. That body shot again. That's a body shot. It's the left hook to the body. Ward's money punch, and this knockdown counts. And Six. he is hurt. This is it. It's, he's not going to recover. It's not like a head punch. He may not be able to recover. I don't think so. And, and Ward is going to go right back down there again. Right to the body again. He's still hurting from the body punch also still. In addition to the head. Arturo Gatti refusing to go down as Mickey Ward pounds away. In the past... This is where Arturo Gatti has been dangerous. But Ward should go back to the body again. Gatti risking another low blow penalty to try to get Ward off of him and lands another big shot. Burton, did Ward punch himself out for the time being with yes. that tremendous barrage in the first minute? Just look at this. Unbelievable. Can you believe there's still a minute and a half to go in the round? Blinking away the blood in his right eye. Can't see out of the right eye. Vicious body shots by Getty. Ward nods as if to say, come on. Come on. Come on, let's fight. Stop, stop. Now trying to get a break. Ward should go right back to the body. That, that's where he's going to the body. You know, you dream of fights like this, but very seldom do they live up to the expectation. This is even more than you can dream of. Just imagine if you bought a ticket. Stop it, Frank. You can stop it any time. Arturo Gatti's out on his feet. Frank Cappuccino's going to let him keep going. Gatti doesn't even have the strength to tie Ward up. And, and Ward is tied. Ward and here comes Gatti back. Less than 10 seconds in the round. Gatti's going to survive the round. should be the round of the century. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm not going to let you take this punishment. Okay? Now look at me. Look at me, Arturo. Tell me something. This guy is done. I know it's a tough fight, man. You got it in there. Tell me okay. Oh, hold on, let go. Right on, man. Mickey Ward right, said right he here, would you see, Gaddy got hurt with the body shot, and that that's did more damage. Now he's coming back. Mickey Ward said he would retire if he loses this fight. From the way Gaddy went back to the corner. In, in most conditions, this fight would have been stopped right here. He may have more fighting left in him. Gentlemen, in round nine, by CompuBox numbers, this fight's going to be stopped. No, nope, it's not. No, no, no. Fight ain't over. Fight ain't over now. Last round. You're back in the corner. Was All the way back. All the way back. I thought Buddy McGirt was going to stop it. Uh, no. Now After now having said to his fighter, we wouldn't let him take any more punishment. Now we're going to go. Round 10. In round 9, they landed 110 punches between them. And they were all power shots. What's your scorecard? Okay, Jim, 85-84, Mickey won. I think that it's pulled ahead with that shot that knocked Arturo Gatti down. He certainly won the eighth round, so I got Mickey won up by a point. Interestingly enough, this round is 
30 seconds short because that timekeeper never stopped the damn clock at the beginning of the round. That's right. This round's only going to be about two and a half minutes. Which is good news for Gaddy. He's come out and asserted himself again at the beginning of the round. But does Gaddy have a full two minutes left in the tank? I'm pretty sure Ward does. looks hurt now, yeah. but he's he keeps coming. Ward has got it, but he's going to have to let it go because the clock is ticking. And at, at this point, Gaddy's winning a round, and this may be the crucial round of the fight. I think Gaddy's having trouble seeing out of both eyes now, Emmanuel. Yes. But he doesn't have trouble firing away. Hard body shot by Gaddy. Knocks Ward back. Ward is exhausted. Daddy sees that and seems to have taken some yes, and he's fresh taken air from it. And he's winning his fight now. I am humbled by watching these two guys take the punishment they are taking. Well, we told you it might be a candidate for fight of the year. We didn't know it would be a candidate for fight of the century. This is the way it has to end. in the 10th round, while Ward could only throw 48, excuse me, Gotti landing 50 <laughs> punches, throwing 99, an incredible performance by an exhausted fighter in the crucible of a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. Uh, before Harold gives his score, I had Gaddy winning by a couple of points. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at some highlights from throughout the fight, and virtually every Two. minute of the fight yeah. produced amazing highlights. Emmanuel, put the headset back on here. We're going to get a look at what went on throughout this pitch battle as Arturo Gatti came out in the first couple of rounds and tried to assert himself as a boxer. Mickey Ward cut above the eye in the first round. And through the early rounds, Gatti's hand speed and maneuverability were the difference in the fight. But Mickey Ward, typically for the Lowell, Massachusetts battler, kept on coming got closer to Arturo, and in the middle rounds of the fight began to assert himself through a straight right hand upstairs and his trademark vicious left hook to the body. Until finally Gaddy went down from accumulated punishment in the ninth round. And then Arturo got up and assaulted Ward again and came back to win the latter half of the ninth and then clearly won the tenth round. And now we wait with suspense for the decision. You go, you care to pick a winner, Emmanuel? Oh, my God. Uh, you know, our fan, I'd have to go with Arturo Gatti, my guess, simply because he was busier and more consistent. Fighters, fighters were on the canvas twice in the fight in round four. It was Ward who went to the canvas on what was immediately ruled by referee Frank Cappuccino, a low blow by Gaddy. And then in round nine, it was Gaddy who went to the canvas 
from an accumulation of punishment. The most important punch being that trademark left hook to the body by Ward. And this was clearly a knockdown. And I feel that if Ward had went back to that same body shot, he would have won by knockdown. Here's Mark Farrow with the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a majority decision. Judge Frank Lombardi scores the bout 94, 94, a draw. Judge Richard Flaherty scores it 94, 93. Judge Steve Weisfeld sees it 95, 93, all to the winner. By majority decision,